If you like awesome. the info we put out there, please click our subscribe button. Subscribe. Help us out. We want to do more yeah. of these videos. The more members we have, the more we can do. It really helps our shop. Broken before it breaks, making it so it doesn't break. All right? Back to work. Transmission talk, Moonshine Harley Davidson. Shop. Guys, we got three different transmissions here. We got a fully street strip built transmission, ready to rock and roll. We have a stock one that doesn't have problems. And, and yours. <laughs> Possibly your transmission. Possibly so we, yours. <laughs> we want to go over what we do. There's a bunch of stuff out there. We want to go over how we set up clutches, why we set them up. We want to go over different steps of transmissions, what we like to do, what we recommend, the very small changes we do in these guys to make them operate smoother, more consistently, last longer, and not end up breaking all your teeth Chewed up. You know, we don't want this. We want this. See that? This is what happens when you have a failure. Couple things to talk about here. First is the clutches that are taking all the power and driving it through the transmission. Because a lockup clutch, when something needs to give, you have to have a give point. For your clutch to slip a little bit is a little bit of insurance on your transmission. So having it slip sometimes prevents these from breaking off. Sometimes. Sometimes, not all the times. So lockups, we've seen more broken stuff with a lockup on the outside of your clutch than without. So that's step number one. Step number two would be having your transmission annealed so the gears are a little bit softer. So instead of just completely cracking them off, there's a little give in the gear. All right. So what happened to yeah. this tranny? Well, so what usually happens is it's third gear and from the factory, these are super hard, obviously, because they go through a lot of abuse. But what is going on with these uh, later model six speeds is these gears are so hard that they don't bend at all. The metal, the metal has very little memory. So metal memory is what makes it pliable. Like uh, aluminum has a lot of memory. So you can take aluminum with your hand and just bend it like this. And titanium has almost no memory. So if you try to bend titanium, it won't bend, it just breaks. So the shock of these gears being engaged, especially under a real heavy load, you know, you move your dog into third gear, third gear slams together and you're off. What happens is instead of the gears, when they, when they engage, instead of them being able to bend a little bit like this, they just start to crack. So it starts out with small little hairline cracks. And part of the process when we do the transmissions is we magnaflux the transmissions, which points out all those little cracks so that we can see if it needs to be replaced and isn't even worth trying to save. Yeah, so in that Magnaflux um, step that's done on these, you're going to actually magnetize all the metal, a solution sprayed on the metal with certain stuff in it. And what it does is under an ultraviolet light when it's held up to it, any cracks are gonna show up in green. It's superhero stuff. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So, when we get a transmission from someone that's used or sometimes even if it's new, we're gonna magnaflux it, have it magnaflux. Then the shafts are gonna be measured for run out to make sure everything's straight before the transmission's gone through and the steps we're gonna explain here in a little bit are done because we need to make sure everything's perfect before we start investing time and energy into it. Step one. Step one. Step two, after everything is good, is second and third gear, gear are annealed to make them a little softer for a transmission that's run on the street. You're racing it sometimes, mostly street use, because when you go into fourth, fifth, and sixth, we're not having guys really have problems in those gears. The reason that they're made super, super strong from the factory is for longevity. They want them to last as long as possible. Harley's doing their job. In this video, if you have a stock bike, don't touch your transmission. This is for the guy that is beating on his bike, that's racing his bike, that has extra horsepower, <clears throat> significantly extra horsepower. You know, we don't see these typically in just a cam job. These are big bore motor builds, guys racing their buddies. So if you have a stock bike or a little bit modified bike, not the video for you. You can do it, of course, because you will improve your shifting. It will be smoother. The gears will sink better. There's a bunch of positives here, but you don't need to spend the money. 
And when you're getting your motor built, just be honest with the way you ride. If you're lucky enough to go to a shop that asks all the qualifying questions, how do you ride, you ride two up, do you like to rip light for light? You know, if you're honest with them and you tell them I rip light to light all the time, this is probably something that you might want to do. If you're, if you just want the ultimate passing power and you want, you know, a, a stock head 124 or 128 or something that's going to have a lot of torque, you, you ride two up every once in a while, you like to pass your buddies on the highway and make them wish they had your motor, you probably don't even need it. Yeah, you know, th this is for the guy that occasionally bounces the bike off the rev limiter. Okay, if you've never hit the rev limiter, it's probably not something you need to do. Just twisting the throttle 80, 90%, that's not riding hard. Riding hard is when you kind of have that bike on the last 10 to 15% yeah. of where it is. If you're going into that thing and you're hitting a rev limiter once in a while, you're missing a shift once in a while, you're coming off a corner sideways, well, you're a very aggressive rider. I don't if, miss shifts, that's your riding. Once in a while, I will miss one. Mike misses them too, I've seen I it. did once. I've seen it. On the EV. It was On the EV, awesome. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So if this is you, let's talk about these transmissions. So a lot of them look similar. The gears, besides making second and third a little bit um, softer, you don't see much difference when you look at these. And the modifications to the dogs are very, very similar on these transmissions. So we got them pulled apart here so you step can three. see them. Um, step three, so after the gears are annealed, we're gonna go into the dogs. So you have a female and a male. This is your male guy right here. Your female's here. So we pulled two gears side by side. And this undercut side right here, which would be this guy, this is a stock transmission. Okay, that's the female side. If you look on this guy, you can see a shelf right here. This is cut five degrees on the female side right here. This is a five degree cut. This guy does not have it. So that's on the female. Now on the male side, this guy right here, the face of this guy, instead of it being flat, which would be this way, they have a little bit of a five degree taper on this face. So when that face is going to hit this guy, there's an angle on it that allows it to go in a little smoother, a little easier. <clears throat> and then the edge of the dog is also cut at a five degree angle. So this guy has the five degree cut right here on this female and on this gear, you can see it's flat, there's no degree cut. So the five degree cut on this side, you can see that cut right here on this female dog. And on this one, you can see, I just wanna show you a different one of what we're doing in here on them. And they're the same all the way down. All that allows so it. It almost becomes like a screw. So when, when the dog hits, it wants to go into be engaged. It doesn't have to be pushed engaged. Yeah, the centrifugal nature of it being aligned that way, as soon as they touch, they grab and force each other together just like a screw would. And they grab you, and force each other. If you don't have a shift fork on a normal transmission, doesn't have that, it'll pop out of gear. Since it has a little bit of angle on it, you can take the fork off after it's spinning, it's gonna stay in gear. For the guy racing, you're talking milliseconds of changes inside the transmission for how smooth it goes in. You will notice a different shifting this. It goes in smoother, it comes out of gear better. Um, it's an overall better setup, and that's every single dog in this transmission is done. And they, and they don't set it up that way from the factory because they don't need to. No, there, there's it's, no reason it's to. An added, it would be an added machining expense. It would, be, it would add a, a lot of cost to the production of the transmission, and most, for most applications, it's not necessary. Step four, so, <laughs> so after everything is dovetail cut at that five degree angle we just talked about, third gear in these transmissions is shimmed so the play is taken out because they are pretty loose from the factory, third gear. I mean, you can grab these, look at this guy. See that movement on third gear? After a third gear is shimmed, movement, but not, it's, it's probably a third of what you see this guy moving. With that being said, the transmission for your everyday rider is great from Harley. We don't have problems. Transmission work through our shop and we do a lot of high performance stuff. We don't see a lot of transmissions. That's why we're saying this is for the guy pushing their bike to the edge. So yeah. don't watch this video and be like, oh my God, I gotta pull my training out and do this. No, this is for the guy pushing the limits, right. which is our customer. And it's also for somebody that's you know already thinking about, I think I need a, a more robust transmission and there's a lot of different options out there. We prefer this because you can go to some of the aftermarket transmissions and that's great. You need to redo your gear ratios in your bike. 
Their customer service may not be the best. This is the stock transmission. So if something happens with this, these are all stock components. They're very easily accessible. And the reason we're doing it with the stock transmission is it's an awesome design. You can make the design more complicated, but you don't need to. Right. And if you're thinking about doing this to your tranny, if you wait for it to break, it costs you a lot more money. Because now you got to buy a whole cassette and then send it to us right. and then we can get everything done. But if you don't have any problems in your transmission yet, it's cheaper to have it done. And compared yeah, to a this baker. Is half the price. Yeah, half the price of, of some of the aftermarket transmissions we're seeing out there. And they're holding up just as well. I mean, we've seen other transmissions that are aftermarket fail as well and have cracked teeth like this. And those companies are working diligently to try to resolve certain situations breaking teeth off. And they do a good job and they'll come up with a good solution. But this is cost effective. It's a good fix. We run them on a lot of the high output applications we have and we recommend it. So if you're beating your bike, take care of your tranny. All right? Upgrade her, get her all taken care of. Well, the <laughs> other thing I want to talk about is if you are a race bike and you're going to the track, what is it instead of just annealing race? second and third, they'll anneal fourth, fifth, and sixth yeah. to make those last longer. Don't want to anneal them on street bikes, but if it is a race application, and you're only taking it at the racetrack, or it's your money-making bike, we have the application to make it full race as well. If, if you're not first, you're last. last. If this is something you want done to your transmission, you don't have to send us your whole bike. You can take it out, your mechanic can take it out. They're gonna pull the whole tranny out just like this guy, and then your output gear, we need this guy, okay? So we need this whole cassette with your door, and we need your output gear, and then we can do the service for you. Send it to us, we get everything done. It's, it's a good three to four week turnaround to have everything machined, put back together and sent to you. Send it to us, we'll get it done. Call the shop, ask for Jamie or Aaron or Nick. Any one of us can price it out for you. We're shipping to and from you and get you taken care of.